It's Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia up against Governor Phil Scott of Vermont. Today on Political Access, we're going to take a look at this hypothetical 2024 presidential matchup. It's an extremely difficult matchup because Phil Scott is one of the very lightest, most liberal Republicans in the country. Even though he's won multiple times and has very high approval ratings in Vermont, Joe Manchin, on the other hand, he's regarded as a conservative Democrat. He's been able to win in a red state, but I think this map would change things up. So how do I see this going? Well, I think Joe Manchin would have very, very high name recognition. A lot of people probably never heard of Phil Scott. They don't know who he is. They don't know what to make of him. Now, some of those people who don't know who he is, they might vote for him just because he's a Republican. However, what I think is much more likely to happen is once they hear anything about Phil Scott, they would say that he is further to the left than Joe Manchin is. So a lot of Republicans would end up scrambling to vote for Joe Manchin, or they would stay home because they couldn't bring themselves to vote for a Democrat. Bill Scott would do his best in the areas with higher wealth, higher education, and Joe Manchin would probably end up winning the working class vote, again, because people know who he is. He's from a red state, and even though a lot of the Democratic base does not like Joe Manchin, I don't think enough of them would cross over and vote for Phil Scott in a lot of these states. I think plenty would stay home, but many voters in the middle would end up coming out and voting for Joe Manchin. So this is extremely difficult. I'm not confident in this. The margins in a lot of these states are either flipped or they're much closer than we would expect, given the completely counterintuitive dynamic of this particular race. So having said all that, let's get started. I'm going to just go through these very quickly and talk about it at the end. Don't want to spend too much time on each state because this is just so hypothetical. You could take a number of different routes with this scenario. But since this one was requested in the comments, I did try to play it out anyway. Let's go to the first state, Alaska. That will be leans for Manchin. Hawaii, safe for Manchin. Let's go to the West Coast. Washington and Oregon, those will be leans for Phil Scott. The Democratic base there, they're not going to be excited about Joe Manchin at all. Now, Phil Scott is going to have to get his name recognition up. In this scenario, I'm assuming he does that to a reasonable level. I think a lot of the voters in Seattle, in Portland, places like King County, Washington, they're going to end up flipping and coming out for Phil Scott. It's going to still be close, but leans for Scott in both of those states. California, that's going to go safe for Manchin. In Nevada, that is likely for Manchin. Idaho and Utah, leans for Manchin. Arizona, likely for Manchin. Montana, likely for Manchin. Wyoming and Colorado, those will both be leans for Manchin. New Mexico, safe for Manchin. North and South Dakota, leans for Manchin. Nebraska at large, likely for Manchin. The 1st District, likely for Manchin. The 2nd District, likely for Manchin. The 3rd District, that's typically the redder district, but in this scenario, it's going leans for Manchin. Again, enough of the Republican base, those red Trump counties, they would not want to vote for Joe Manchin, and they really would not at all want to vote for the Republican nominee, Bill Scott. So a ton of them would stay home. Some of them would end up seeing Joe Manchin as the farther right candidate, and that's how Joe Manchin wins that red district. Kansas, likely for Manchin. Oklahoma, leans for Manchin. Texas, that'll flip and be leans for Manchin. Minnesota, leans for Manchin. Iowa and Missouri are leans for Manchin. Arkansas and Louisiana, that'll be likely for Joe Manchin. Up to Wisconsin, that is going to be leans for Manchin. Illinois will be likely for Joe Manchin. So far, ton of states for Joe Manchin. Let's go up to Michigan, likely for Joe Manchin. Indiana will be leans for Manchin. Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama, those will all be likely for Manchin. How about down in Florida? In this particular matchup, I would see it going to Joe Manchin by a leans margin. That might even be a likely margin, given the trend of the state. I just don't see many voters down in Florida, including the rest of the South, to really want to come out and vote for Phil Scott. Let's go up to Georgia, likely for Manchin. South Carolina and North Carolina are both likely for Manchin. Let's jump up to Ohio. That will be leans for Manchin. West Virginia, this is Joe Manchin's home state. As much as I don't think they're a big fan of him at this point, and most other Democrats would have no chance here, up against Phil Scott, Manchin would win this by over 10 points, safe for Manchin. Let's jump up to Maine. At large, leans for Manchin. The first district, that's typically the blue district in this matchup. This flips and goes for Phil Scott by a leans margin. The second district, that's usually the redder district. This time it goes back to Joe Manchin by a likely margin. Let's go to New Hampshire. Now we're getting into Phil Scott's part of the country. Higher educated, wealthier, the Northeast, that's where he's going to do better. So in New Hampshire, I have this going to Phil Scott by a leans margin. Now let's go to Vermont, Phil Scott's home state. 
This is usually one of the bluest states in the country. It's a bastion of progressivism, and it's typically associated with the Democrats. In this matchup, they know Phil Scott, they love him, and I have Vermont going to the Republican Scott by a safe margin. The next state, New York, that will go to Joe Manchin by a lean's margin. Massachusetts, another state, very blue, but Phil Scott flips it and wins it by a likely margin. Connecticut, likely for Scott. Rhode Island, leans for Scott. New Jersey, leans for Manchin. Delaware, leans for Scott. Maryland, safe for Joe Manchin. Washington, D.C., safe for Joe Manchin. Let's go up to Pennsylvania. That will be likely for Joe Manchin. And finally, the last state is Virginia, and that will be leans for Joe Manchin. And that is my map, and that would result in 53 electoral votes for Phil Scott, 485 for Joe Manchin. So Joe Manchin has absolutely no problem winning this matchup. It's never going to happen, and would it actually happen this way? No, there's no chance it would happen this way. But this is the best I could come up with after trying to think about how it would go in each state. Again, you could take a lot of different paths. Phil Scott is just too liberal for the modern Republican Party. He would be cast as a rhino, and he's pretty soft-spoken. He doesn't have a lot of charisma. He's a great fit for a small state like Governor of Vermont, and a lot of voters in the more progressive cities and counties across the country, they would probably rather have Phil Scott. They're going to have to hold their noses and either vote for Joe Manchin or stay home. And I do think enough of both bases would stay home, so it would come down to the swing voters, the independents, the suburbs. And that's how Joe Manchin wins most of these states. Almost all of them, I think, would be low to mid-single digits. Hardly any would be by safe margins. Not easy to do at all, but I tried to play it out anyway. Hopefully you had some fun with this. It's certainly unusual to see some of these states going red. And a state like Mississippi voting to the left of a place like Colorado. But that's what's going to happen in these far-fetched matchups. But let me know in the comments, do you mostly agree with this map? Or would you change 25 of these states and have Phil Scott winning it? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I will see you on the next video.